Hi, this is Debbie and today I'm going to be watercolouring the Spring Flower set from Simon's Stamp with a no-line colouring technique. This is one of my favourite ways to watercolour flowers as you don't get any strong lines visible to deter from the delicate blooms. I'm planning on pairing the Spring Flower set with a sentiment from the hand-lettered encouragement set. I'm starting with a long rectangle of Archie's Cold Press watercolour card in the Misty and I've lined up the crocus leaves to start the stamping. I'm using antique linen distress ink as this ink being light in colour and highly water reactive will become invisible once I start painting. I'm stamping the images at least a couple of times until I can see a clear outline to guide me as I paint later on. I continue stamping the various images from the set along the long edge of the watercolour card until I completely fill the space with blooms and leaves. I have a new tube of watercolour paint that I'm really enjoying at the moment. It's the gorgeous Rose of Ultramarine from Daniel Smith which is a purple hue in which the blue settles on the rose list to give an interesting two-tone effect from one paint. I've added the paint to my palette and I'm using a little water to get a paintable consistency and then bringing that to the base of the crocus where the deepest most intense colour would be. I'm then rinsing my brush and using the water to spread the colour up the petal to give a graduation of colour. Once that petal is painted I'll move on to a separate petal which doesn't touch the first so that the paint doesn't bleed from one petal to the other. Later I'll come back once the petals are dry and paint those in between. While the crocus petals dry I'm moving on to painting the greens of the foliage. I try and incorporate different greens and blue tones for the leaves rather than sticking to one green. It adds variation but is also more lifelike to have all sorts of greens from true greens to yellow greens and blue greens. Next I'll move back to the crocus which are now dry enough for me to paint the other petals. I've painted around the flower stamen and will return later to paint those a bright orange. I'll play some music while I continue to paint and I'll be back shortly. that I struggled rather with the daisy shaped flowers. Somehow I couldn't get the look I wanted, however I kept working at it adding deeper shades to define the petals and then blending out with water to give soft lines and eventually I was happier with how they looked. I'd already used a light peachy cream colour on the lower portion of the background to give it some interest and then added some splatters to finish. With the panel now dry I put it back in the misty to stamp the sentiment from the hand-lettered encouragement set in Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I stamped it a couple of times and then went over any areas which hadn't stamped perfectly with a black marker. I'm going to be adding some pencil shading to this watercolour next but before I do I thought I'd mention the sharpener I've been using as I've had a number of questions. I'm not sure how you pronounce the name but it's the Degal Multi Sharpener. It has a dial which can adjust the length of the pencil sharpened from a short point to a long point. I prefer my pencil lead short and sharp as I feel there's less chance of breaking and so I use the sharpener with a number one setting. In the main I use pencils to add more depth to the darkest areas such as where petals overlap or the centre of a flower. Also they are great for adding the fine line details such as those on the leaves. I sometimes struggle with a paintbrush to add finer details 
as my brush line is often work out too thick. I'm still working on those daisies to try and get them looking right. I did find they look much better when I started to add some pencil details and darker tones to the flower centres. With the pencil shading now complete, I took a full piece of Nina Desert Storm card and scored it along the long side at four and a quarter inches. I reinforced the score line with a bone folder and then trimmed it to fit the watercolour panel. I added foam adhesive to the back of the panel and then added it to the card base. I wanted to add just a little embellishment to the card and so I pulled out my selection of sequins and picked out a few colours which went well. I arranged a few sequins on the panel and then attached them with Ranger Multimedia Mat. And that completes this card using the Spring Flower Set to No Line Watercolour of Order of Spring Flowers. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDudaDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.